Hi, my name is Carl, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to achieve a rough color inside of Maya 2023. First off, you have to understand that a rough color is basically just a cylinder around the neck. So the first step will be to create that cylinder that will later be used as a guide for your rough color. To do so, stay simple. Start with the cylinder around the neck, move its vertices around using the move tool with self-selection, and get as close as you can from your reference. And once I'm satisfied with the result, I will solidify those two edges using bevels. The reason behind that is that I want my cylinder to be as smooth as possible, but still keep those hard edges. And now it's time to subdivide it. To do so, go into the mesh menu and click on smooth. And voila, now there's no nickeling happening it's all smooth, it's really just what you're looking for. Now there's one thing that I like to do is to place my guide inside of a layer. That way I'm sure I will never misclick it by accident and it's just gonna be more organized. It's really a quality of life thing that I like to do inside of Maya. Now we make our guide as a live object by clicking on the little magnet and we set our layer to reference. And now we're ready to create the curve that will give us our rough color. So for that, simply go in the curve menu, find create curve and click on EP curve. And I'll go in wireframe mode if you want to be aligned with your reference. Another way to do it is to use our layer that we created before by clicking on that little box until you see the T. That option will make your entire layer unselectable and in wireframe mode. But the way I like it the most is to use the X-ray mode on top of the viewport. I think it's the easiest way to work with references because it's really simple and it's really not in the way. And now we can start drawing our curve. At this point, it's really simple. Simply follow your reference. Make sure that every fold is on top of it and there shouldn't be any problem. The only thing that has a really high chance to happen would be that since we creating a 3D object from a 2D picture, we really can't do anything but deal with a third axis. And to do that, we're going to do some modification on the end of our curve. I will use the control vertices at the end of my curve and make sure that the part that is perpendicular to the camera is looking good from any direction. When you're working on that, make sure that the very last vertex of your curve stays on your guide. Because now what we're going to do is to create another curve that will attach to it and go all around your color and make a perfect loop. Now using the C key on my keyboard, which is bind to attached curve, I'm going to start that extension and make it go all around to the start of my first curve. All I have to do is the same as the first side I did, is that I will draw my rough color but instead of following the reference i'm going to try to just match the distance between each fold so at least it looked the same Once it's done, once again using the snap curve, I'm going to snap the end of my new curve to the start of my previous one and attach them together to make a single curve. For that, once my two curves are selected, I'm going in the curve menu and select attach. And now that I don't need those two curves anymore, I'm going to delete them and make sure that my new curve is clean before I go to the next step. Now I'm going to create geometry from this curve using the Sweet Mesh tool. What it does is that it lets me create geometry from a curve and modify it using a bunch of parameters. At this point, I'm going to use the Line option to make it flat. And then I'm going to use the Rotate profile to rotate it in the right direction. And once I'm satisfied with the rotation, I'm going to add more precision. So I'm going to have more division inside of my geometry, just so it looks clean. 
And now what I want to do is to make it smaller. So I'm going to play with the scale profile and make it match my reference. At this point, you will probably start to notice some interpenetration happening inside of your geometry. To correct that, simply use the control vertices of your curve and move them around using your guide just to make sure that it's not happening anymore. And don't hesitate to stop using your guide as a live object as I did here if you ever feel the need to move around more freely. Just make sure that you are respecting the original shape of your rough color. Now that it's looking good, I'm going to check the optimized box and play with the precision slider until I get a result that makes sense. All because I want it to look good, but I don't want an excessive amount of divisions. And you can now delete your curve. And so we now want to extrude our rough color. Start by selecting all your faces. Use extrude and scale them towards the neck. And now I'm adjusting the center of the rough color just to make sure that every folds are aligned with the reference. Now, as you can see, because we extruded in the opposite direction of our faces, our face normals are all inverted. To change that, it's really simple. Select all of your faces, go in Mesh Display and click Reverse. Now I'm starting to see edges that are hard and are not supposed to. So what I'm going to do is make sure that every edges are the way they're supposed to be. To do that, I'm going to select every border edges that are supposed to be hard, go into Mesh Display and click Harden Edge. Then I'm going to Shift Select that will select every edges that are not supposed to be hard and click on Soften Edge. And here I just noticed a corner that doesn't look good. Um, in any project, you should always go for a better result instead of a better time. So don't hesitate to do correction at any point. And now it's time to do the bevels on the edges outside the color. At this point, I want to remove the inner loop of my color. To do that, I will select one face, then shift double click the face right next to it. It will then select the entire face loop and then I can delete it. And now you have your rough color. So if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to let me know, leave me a like, a comment, and on this note, keep having fun modeling. Bye.